Hey, this is just a quick video showing the T-Splines for Rhino uh, version 3 work in progress grasshopper component. That's kind of a mouthful. But I just wanted to show uh, what we've added to it and some of the new features. So I'm using uh, WIP4 of T-Splines and if I start up grasshopper here it's uh, 0.8.0004. The first thing that you probably want to do in order to get started with the grasshopper plugin is if you have the previous component installed um, you'll need to just hit component info. It'll tell you what directory that is in. Um, go ahead and open that directory, uh, shut down Rhino, and delete the file. So there we go. And then we start up Rhino again and start up Grasshopper. And the easiest way to install the Grasshopper component is to just drag and drop it onto the Grasshopper window. As soon as you do that, you'll see in the extra tab here we've got four t-spline um, commands. The first one that I wanted to start off with is the one that we had in the previous component. Um, we have improved it quite a bit. Uh, it's a conversion node and it takes in a geometry and tries to convert it to a t-spline. Then the nice thing about the way Grasshopper works is it can take that t-spline and try and convert it to uh, other types of geometry as well as it can. So let's take in a mesh, a b-wrap, and a surface, and we'll try and output a mesh, a brep, and a surface. Uh, I'll go ahead and load up a file that's got a torus here, and do a wireframe so we can see the previews a little bit better. So if I set this as a, uh, a surface, and then plug that into my conversion node, um, if it it dumps out the surface, it's exactly the same thing. So let me, let me go ahead and turn off those previews. Uh, same thing with a brep. When it dumps out a mesh, it um, does it as the um, smooth, uh, the like the box mode version of the T-spline. So those are um, the different outputs that you can get. Um, if I uh, here go, here we have a mesh box, just a plain Rhino mesh box. If I um, set him as the input to this conversion, then you can see that it can no longer output to a surface. That's because uh, if I do a conversion of this guy, he dumps out six separate surfaces. So um, this output just uh, starts to fail at that point. And then um, when we take in, or when we look at the beer up, let's go ahead and, and bake him. It's a, uh, you know, it's a nice smooth poly surface like you'd hope for. Um, one thing that's kind of new about this, the way that we're doing this, is you can actually right-click on the T-spline and bake the T-spline itself, and that gives you a uh, editable T-spline that you can continue to um, do stuff with. Okay, so that's all I had for that conversion. The next node that I wanted to show is the um, extrude node. So I'll create an input geometry param. I, I don't need to use the TS convert node for this. Um, it's mostly useful if you want to convert without doing any intermediate editing. And a uh, let's do a curve here. Curve param. So, um, oh yeah, let me switch to box mode here so we can see more clearly what, what's going on. So I set um, the uh, geometry there as the box mode T-spline. And then I set the curve as well. And what this, um, grab an output mesh so we can actually see the result. What it does is it takes the, um, this curve, finds the start point, figures out which face is closest on that start point, and then extrudes the face out um, as you'd expect. Uh, let me, we'll just move him over. There we go, now we've got another um, extrusion going on, and I'll paste the previous guy. If, uh, if this is multiple curves, then it'll do the extrusion all at once and produce a single, um, single output here. So there we go. Um, there's our uh, extruded guy, and if I bank him you can see the topology a little bit better. But well, that's, um, that's the extrude node. OK, 
Okay, so um, the next thing that I wanted to show is the piping command. Let me delete that. Uh, you know, I'll just reopen the file. So the piping command. And the piping command takes in a bunch of curves. It's a, it's a very basic um, implementation of the, the piping command that's, uh, that's new in um, T-Spline's work in progress. So we grab him. We get a geometry error. Actually, what we want to do uh, is we want to grab the wireframe of a B-Rep. So grab a B-Rep, plug it in, take those wires, plug them in, and then let's just do this as a mesh um, so it's a little bit quicker. Okay, so set one B-Rep, and then we'll change the density to uh, one. And then the pipe command goes through and figures out how to lay um, a pipe all the way across the, uh, the surface. So if I bake this guy, there we go, you can see um, what the pipe command is doing. And of course the nice thing about having it in Grasshopper is that um, as I edit these, or edit the surface and everything else updates and um, produces a new mesh. Um, we're uh, we're looking at adding some more options to this. Right now, the only thing you can set is the uh, the radius of the pipe. Uh, let's see. The other the last uh, node here is the face info node, and you give it a T spline. It'll give you the uh, center points of each face, the face normals, and the face indices. Um, I've got a, a slightly more uh, complex example here. Let me go ahead and switch this over. So um, basically what it's doing is it's taking in all of the faces, moving uh, points along the normals, creating lines out of those, and then it's using the uh, extrude node to extrude out a, a final mesh. And so my uh, input here is you know what percentage of the faces I'm randomly going to be extruding. So I can just fiddle with that guy and see the uh, the mesh extrusion um, update in real time. And then I go ahead and bake him. And there's my final mesh. So I think that's about it. Thanks a lot.